Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like a stubble, to whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary and strengthens the powerless. Oh, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not pro proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. 
For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I'm, I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it for all, for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. 
and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went out from Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may or may not know about me that I became a mom and was ordained at the same time. I was seven months pregnant when the bishop ordained me. Needless to say, there is still an ongoing debate in our household about whether Simone is also a deacon because she was in utero when I was ordained. <laughs> but what becoming a mom and being ordained at the same time has meant is that the patterns of those two vocations are interwoven in me. So just like on any given day of ministry, my plan for the day can get up and did with a phone call or a drop-in visit or a text, so is the precarious nature of parenting. I can be in the middle of preparing a dinner when a friend crisis erupts in the kitchen with one of the kids. I can be driving someone to practice only to learn from the back seat that a kid is struggling with a bully. I can be trying to write a sermon and another kid will burst in with a bloody knee. Some folks might see those uh, parenting and pastoring moments as interruptions in a day. But as someone who became a pastor and a parent at the same time, that constant feeling of being pushed and pulled, interrupted while trying to charge ahead, and even rerouted entirely is part and parcel of living my vocations faithfully. I think that's why I find our gospel lesson today so compelling. Jesus has just come off of casting out a demon in the temple, like we heard about last week in Matthew's gospel, with everyone awestruck by his healing and his teaching with authority. Today, then, in these next verses in Mark, he goes to Simon's house, presumably just with the intent to chill out for a little while, and he is immediately notified that Simon's mother-in-law is sick. After healing her, Jesus tries to settle back down, but by sundown, the whole town has come to the door asking for healing and for cures, which Jesus graciously offers. In the wee hours of the morning, finally, Jesus goes out to escape to a deserted place for a moment of peace and prayer. And Simon and the others interrupt him in this moment for more work. So Jesus rallies the troops and off they go, proclaiming the gospel and casting out more demons. Even Simon's mother-in-law, the text tells us, uh, as soon as she is healed, gets up and begins serving Jesus and his disciples. Now, this is not to be confused with some sort of subservient expectation of women in service to men. No, the word that is used here about what Simon mother-in-law does is the same word that we use for what deacons do. She serves. In fact, she is the first deacon in the New Testament. And as such, she teaches us about what following Jesus is like following along in this story we hear in this day in the life of Jesus. You are constantly pulled and pushed, invited into service, whatever ways that that service shows up on your doorstep. Yesterday, I was part of a bishop's election. Sometimes I think that the way we elect bishops is almost cruel. For the community where the candidate serves, they are both incredibly proud of their priest, but also incredibly anxious that they might lose their priest. 
all sorts of emotions and concerns get stirred up. Maybe my priest doesn't want to be here anymore. Maybe my priest is neglecting her job, me or my church. But getting lost in those anxieties misses what is actually happening in a bishop's search. The priest is simply doing what he or she does every day, listening and responding to the call of ordained life, wherever that call pushes or pulls. Now, sometimes that means hopping into a car to go do a hospital visit. Sometimes that means stopping the crafting of a report or an article or a sermon to be present with a hurting soul. Sometimes that means taking an extended amount of time with a stranger at the grocery store or the gym or at the bus stop because your priesthood doesn't just belong within the walls of the church. But sometimes that also means saying yes to serving on a board for workforce housing, saying yes to a bishop's request that you serve the diocese in a particular way, saying yes to raising funds for your seminary, and even saying yes to discernment to the episcopacy. Just like there are countless balls to juggle in parenting, there are countless balls to juggle in ordained life. And that's just what we do when Jesus calls us. We serve. Now, as we settle down into the idea that I will, in fact, be staying in ministry with you, I see this day in the life of Jesus that we hear from Mark's gospel today as an invitation. A scholar, Debbie Thomas, describes our invitation today is to spend our days as Jesus spent his, living graciously and compassionately in this vast and often terrible in-between, to offer comfort and our steady presence to those who suffer, to encourage those in pain to hang on because the, the work of redemption is ongoing, to create and restore community, family, and dignity to those who have to walk through this life sick, weak, and wounded, without cures, to make sure that no one who has to die, and that's all of us in the end, dies abandoned or unloved, if we can help it. That means, as we at Hickory Neck step away from this time of discernment, we do the work of that first deacon, Simon's mother-in-law. We get up and we get back to work, caring for one another, tending to our neighbors, sharing good news with those who need a good word. Though this call may sometimes feel like a frustratingly interrupted time of prayer. In fact, the interruption today is the perfect reminder of the life of Jesus, being pushed and pulled, interrupted and redirected, and in moments like this, seeing the beautifully sacred in the midst of all our very human feelings. I invite you today Take my hand so that we can get back to the work of the kingdom. Amen.
holy God, you are gracious and full of compassion. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people. Holy God, your, you search us out and know us. Your servants are listening. We pray for all your holy church. Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and Jennifer, Charles, Jim, and Bob, our clergy. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen us. Holy God, you call the whole world to perceive your glory. We pray that through your grace, all nations and those in authority shall come to your light. We pray for President Biden, Governor Youngkin, legislators, and the judi judiciary, this community, the, the nation, and the world. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Holy God, you shall deliver the poor who cry out in distress. Grant us all the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, especially through the ministry of from his hands. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Holy God, you alone are our rock and our salvation, our stronghold. You pray, no, we pray that your people in any need or trouble may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory. Praying especially for Heather, Frank, Lisa, Mike, Jean, Craig, Cindy, Sue, Scott, George, Cheryl, Susie, Dale, Shirley, Grayson, Brandon, Esther, Curtis, Buddy, Ellen, Marjean, Cindy, Don, April, and Julie. And those being impacted by violence in the Holy Land. For the men and women serving in the armed forces, especially for Zachary, Janine, Tim, Max, Owen, and Billy. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Holy God, you welcome with your divine pleasure all the faithful departed. Lead us, who know now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins. Have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Welcome to Hickory Neck. We are so glad that you are here this morning. I'd like to invite any of our folks who have February birthdays or anniversaries to come and join us up front so that we can offer some prayers for you. So just come on in into the altar rail area. Everybody else, if you'll find a prayer book, we're going to be on page 830 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 830. Huh, who knew? <laughs> ah, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> wow. Can't even squeeze this in. It's amazing. It's the shortest month, and it's got all the people. <laughs> I know. Okay, friends, if we'll start on the far end, it looks like we might be starting with Maggie, if you'll tell us what you're celebrating and when, and if you want to say how many years you can, but you don't have to. Yeah. This is Maggie, and how old are you turning? Three, yeah, do you remember when? <laughs> Valentine's Day. Aww. I will uh, have my 17th birthday this year because I'm also a leap year baby on the 29th. And if you multiply four times 17, you get 68. <laughs> Collect number 50 on page 830 together. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. notes for you. We have um, some big stuff coming up. Next Sunday is quite full. Uh, we will be gathering for a newcomer's reception after this service over in the uh, Wilkinson Center. So if you are newer to Hickory Neck and would like to just learn more or connect, please join us and just let us know. We're happy to give you more information about that. Meanwhile, uh, that Sunday will also be Super Bowl Sunday. I'm told there's a football game, uh, but we will be celebrating S-O-U-P-E-R Bowl Sunday. So bring your canned goods, your box items to celebrate. We'll be donating all of that to Fish in support of their ministry. Also next Sunday, in a shift of date, the women are gathering for brunch in this space. 
uh, next Sunday, and they're going to be packaging up uh, gift uh, baskets and bags and boxes for our um, college students. So um, feel free uh, to join them for that brunch as well. So lots to choose from next week. Then about a week and a half from now, we're going to be celebrating Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday falls on Valentine's Day this year. So um, Noah will not be putting ashes in the shapes of hearts. Um, it will be crosses. Uh, but come with us. Um, you can uh, feel free to keep celebrating after service, but we would love to have you with us. We will have ashes to go again if you can't make the 7 o'clock service. Uh, and we also um, hope to be live streaming, so you'll be able to see it from home if need be. Uh, we do have a quick update about the winter shelter. If um, our uh, folks will come up for that, I think there's still a few volunteer needs. So um, somebody's going to tell us, yeah, a little bit more about that. Good morning. I figure you'll get tired of me soon enough. So <laughs> uh, we are still looking for some overnight help, particularly men. Uh, the shifts start at 8:45 and end at 5:30 in the morning. They can be split from 8:45 to 1 and then from 12.45 to 5.30. Our parish only has three nights to cover. Our other partner churches have taken the other four days uh, to help us out, so we really need to step up. Uh, those of you that have already volunteered, thank you so much, bless you. Uh, we have decided this year to have two men on each shift, so for the men that have already, uh, we know you're, you're coming with us, but we're gonna also hopefully have a partner for you. So please see, and, um, we're just gonna put this in the epistle again this week and we'll be back next week, I'm sure. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Cindy. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Oh, nope, sorry. Oh, sorry, I'm not giving you that yet. Yes, ma'am, sorry, oh, sorry. But wait, there's one, I need to get up here, sorry. I have a gift for you. I just wanted to offer our, um, we know this has been a adventure of a few months for you and tomorrow is a, I'm sure a, a rough day or a rough day for your family and I um, just want to give you a gift to offer love to Q. in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of the glory, glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation the bread, this bread and this wine. We pray that you graciously send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to the heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior, Christ has taught us, we are bold.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.